Red light therapy just comes off like one of those things that biohackers brag about after they jump out of their cold plunge that came exactly 56 seconds after their 900 degree sauna for intervals of four milliseconds. But I really should reserve judgment until after I've analyzed the research on the topic. So that's what I did. I'd like to introduce you to four studies that I found on the topic of red light therapy, or as many researchers call it, photobiomodulation, and its impact on reversing skin aging. At the end of this, you'll either be one of those people that is yelling, uh, take my money now to invest in your own red light therapy, or you'll be one of those people with their eyes squinting through the BS. Unbelieving. Let's find out. First off, red light therapy is simply a wavelength of light that can penetrate through the layers of your skin, from the top layer, the epidermis, to the lower layer, the dermis, and beyond. Red light falls within the wavelength of 600 to 700 nanometers, although studies have been done with non-red light therapies, basically anything that falls between 400 and 1100 nanometers. And the researchers of this study argue that all these wavelengths have been shown to be effective. And they end up showing some pretty impressive results. If we look at skin wrinkle depth, which we want to go down, we can see that the starting point at D0 and then with each month or so, there's a further decline up to an over 30% reduction in wrinkle volume. I'll show you some real life pictures in a bit. Another metric is skin elasticity. For this one, we wanted to go up and sure enough, it again improves with time. Okay, some pretty good signs here. Now, I'll get more into the exact mechanisms of exactly how red light therapy causes these effects in future content, but for now, I can point out that some of the chief proteins that gives your skin a useful structure is collagen, because collagen is a long triple helix protein that actually supports the skin architecture. The reason that I mention that is because the researchers measured skin collagen content, and by the bar graphs, you can see it increases. But even by ultrasound, you can see that there's more yellow or hot spots, a greater density of collagen proteins than before. Okay, so this seems like a slam dunk, but I've been secretly showing you something on each of these graphs that is wrong. If you're a statistician, you've likely already noticed it because it'll jump off the page. Here, I'll show you the first piece of data on a skin wrinkle depth again. If you're still confused, the answer is right here. The statistical test used. This data is known as a multiple comparison because, well, uh, there are multiple comparisons. I can't think of a better word. However, the researchers used a t-test, which is the improper statistical test for this analysis because it increases the odds that you'll find an effect when there isn't one. I cover this kind of thing in my course called Health Autonomy, where I teach you how to analyze and apply studies to your own life. I have a special emphasis on detecting errors like this because reading summaries of studies would have you believe that this was correct when it clearly isn't. At any rate, that doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't real results here, but it's a pretty big problem that occurs across the study. But let's do away with statistics and actually look at the results here. This is a before and after image of the same person, obviously. What do you think? Is there a difference? So I would say yes, at first glance. But I also don't think that the lighting is exactly the same either. My guess is as good as yours, so let me know your impression. Now, before we move on, if you've been with Physionic for some time, you might be wondering what the control group or placebo group look like because it's difficult to evaluate if we don't have a comparison group, at least without significant you know, suspicion. I regret to inform you there was no control group for this study, so suspicion remains. Still, we needn't rely on just this study. I found this study rather comical, actually. I mean, the title gives away the results, so I won't bother going into too much depth, but I found two things really funny about this one. One 
Here is an image that they used as evidence the light therapy reduced skin wrinkles. I'm sure they didn't use crayon green lines to identify the wrinkles, but fewer green squiggly lines in a picture that looks like they shine the light on the snow to reflect it back up on her face is a poor level of evidence in my book. But if you believe in the green squigglies, more power to you, so long as you refer to yourself as the squiggles. That's all I ask. The second thing that I found comical was that the results indicated reduced skin hydration. That's not a good thing, but they did a bit of wordplay that I quite enjoyed. Check this out. They mentioned that other studies showed a skin hydration level of 75 units, but in the study that we're discussing now, the skin hydration was slightly higher and therefore better, around 77 units. Seems reasonable except that before the red light therapy, they were at 82 units. A fun way to spin that one. <laughs> Bottom line, it got worse. But I don't want to just dunk on this study. They did do some things really well, like using two different light wavelengths, red light and amber light. And they essentially split the face in two and applied one to each side and measured the effects, which I think is a simple and clever trick. That said, this study also had no control group like the last. Still, we're in luck because there was a better conducted study that did have a control group. I don't know if you've ever heard the song, uh, White Light by Gorillaz. A white Light. Okay, but it reminds me of all these uh, different wavelengths of light that researchers use. Even beyond red light therapy, there's uh, work that's been done on white light therapy and others as well. And there are also some uh, different protocols used. Well, I'm covering some of those protocols, the most common wavelengths used, including the different types of light in the extended version of this video, which is accessible as a Physionic Insider. You can find the link in the uh, description to join if you're interested. So this study with the uh, control group compared red light therapy against, well, doing nothing. It's not the best control, but it's something which I appreciate. Now, there's a bit of a confusing table of data associated with this study, and I'd normally show it, but it's going to take a while to explain. So I'll go ahead and tell you that the metrics for skin roughness, collagen, and wrinkles all improved with the red light therapy over the control condition. Promising results. I do have to pick uh, certain nits because it still can't be ignored that there's no placebo group. But I realize that kind of thing is difficult, although I would argue it's not impossible. Like using uh, non-penetrative light as a control or simply adding a distracting uh, masking secondary intervention that's applied to both groups so that you can subtract it out ex post facto. So what's the deal here? By a measure of scientific rigor, I would consider this evidence poor. That isn't to mention the fact that all the studies were funded by industry. And here's a fun fact. One of the researchers for one of the studies was the CEO of the red light therapy mask, which is a first for me. All the studies show effects. So like I said at the beginning, if you want to believe, then there's no evidence against it. And if you're normally suspicious, you'd likely find this evidence well, lackluster and not worth its salt. But there are other aspects that have more evidence behind them. So check out this video if you want more, and I'll catch you over there.